It's an exciting time for sports fans in Seattle. It's also an exciting time for pitcher for the Detroit Tigers, Matt Boyd, born in Mercer Island, Washington, now lives in Seattle, has tweeted about Seattle getting a franchise, so he's, I'm assuming, he's on be, board. I'm assuming he's on board. Oh, I'm yeah. assuming he's going to be a fan of the team. He joins us now on FaceTime. Matt, are you already putting your name in the hat to drop a ceremonial first puck or what? <laughs> Man, I, I don't know about that, but uh, I already got two season tickets, so uh, we're dialed in and uh, we can't wait. This has been something, it's, it's, People here wanted it for a long time. It was a dream of mine when I was growing up as a kid playing hockey and uh, so cool to finally happen. Matthew, let me ask you about your background in hockey because uh, you know we were talking before we came on. You played a lot of hockey. Give us, uh, give us the backdrop. Yeah, um, I played, uh, played for about 13 years. Um, played all the way to Midget uh, over here for uh, Seattle Snow King Junior Thunderbirds Association. Um, yeah, just uh, was always on the point. We played in the PCAHL, going up all the way to Kamloops and all through the lower Fraser Valley, playing, you know, Burnaby Winter Club, North Shore Winter Club, Kamloops, you know, North Delta goes on and on. And uh, um, just grew up for a love of the game. And uh, it uh, unfortunately, after in high school, I had to make a decision after my freshman year. And, um, you know, out here, it's either go the junior B route, there's no junior A team or go out to the East Coast to prep school, which is what a lot of my teammates did. And I don't think my mom was going to let me leave home. And uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I stayed I stayed put, played a little pickup hockey, a little house stuff, but, uh, you know, ended up going with baseball, but still got a love for hockey. All right, Matt, be honest. Were you one of those guys that was in immediately in like the first 10 minutes for one of the $10,000 deposits? Or did you come in a little later as part of that $34,000 group? <laughs> I uh, I gotta say, I, luckily I had a dad who was at work and uh, he was, you know, on the internet, ready, you know, on his internet browser to to punch that button. So uh, I I enlisted him to to get our two tickets. So uh, that's all we could get was two. We tried to get four, and we only had, we only had a chance to get two. So um, we were one of the early ones, but uh, yeah, it worked out. So give us a little idea, Matt. Obviously, having grown up in the area. What can we expect from the Seattle fans now that this has finally happened? What's the atmosphere going to be like? It's going to be electric. I mean, Seattle, they get behind their sports all the way through. It's You look at when the Sounders came in and got the MLS franchise, it, it people were selling. It was selling out left and right. It was on fire. Um, you, you look at what, the, what they do getting behind the Seahawks and the Mariners. I mean, you know, you got the 12th man. So it's people are hungry for hockey here it's going to be an awesome rivalry between i think right up by five going up and playing the canucks um but it's going to be electric i mean look what look what happened in vegas last year uh i i i'd like to i i think that's the high end you know it only can get a little bit better than that, <laughs> that's the uh, high I end think, um, i know i i think uh in terms of atmosphere and energy, you can expect that. And it's it's going to be special. And it, everyone's looking forward to it. Yeah, I can only imagine how loud uh, that building is going to be. Or even if they might, like, construct it in a way that makes it louder. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But I have to ask you the topic that sports fans in Seattle are now talking about nonstop. The name of the team, the Ooh, logo, yeah. the colors. Do you have an opinion on this? I mean, these are the important things we got to talk about. Exactly. I mean... I don't know. The Metropolitans, you know, like this. That's I've had this shirt for a while now. That's cool. But I played for the Junior Thunderbirds. It fits with the strong Native American influence here. Um, I think that'd be really cool. Uh, I think that'd be an awesome team name. And, uh, you know, sticking with the, the blue and green colors that are kind of, you know, consistent through the city. Um, the Totems could be a cool name. You know, that's the Junior B team that has been here forever. I think they have actually a a pro, you know, uh, some pro history roots way back in the day too. So I don't know. I think, I think going with one of those two names or, you know, keeping it classy with the first American team to win the Stanley cup. I think any of those three would be, uh, would be pretty, would fit. Well, you know, you mentioned about you playing and I would say, first of all, you made the right decision because you're a major league <laughs> baseball player now. So that was a good choice. Yeah. You never know. Maybe you would have made it in hockey too, but, yeah. uh, you, from what I understand, you played against Tyler Johnson. He grew up in that area as a younger kid. Uh, what was the yeah. backstory to that? Well, so he, I mean, we're the same age. He, uh, I don't know him that well. I feel like I should get to know him, but we played him. He played for <laughs> Spokane. Um, and uh, he was always, I mean, he was the stud, you know, he was 
still smaller is. than us, but yeah, still is. He's <laughs> he smaller, but he was faster, and it was the kind of thing where it was like, you get a body on him, man, make sure it counts. We got to take him <laughs> out of his game. And it's just he'd skate circles around us, but I mean, you know, I like to think that you know Snow King was better. I, I thought I thought we usually had the edge on Spokane, but they were like, they were the other American team in our association that was really up there in terms of talent and competitiveness and i'm pretty sure they played in that same bc league as us so that's the story there we just you know every level all the way up we just kept playing each other and uh i remember connor adecki i think he went and played at southern new hampshire he's one of my best friends um he played d3 and played for the junior monarchs out there he's one of the prep school guys he was always the guy that was fast enough to stay with them <laughs> connor was always the guy bill was our coach connor was on him and it was I was on the point, man. It was just put a body on him, make it hurt, make sure you get someone. If you're going to go to the box, just take someone with you. Get out of their skin. So, you know, that's that story. Good advice. Good advice. (laughs) Matt, tell us something you learned from your hockey playing days that you were able to bring over to your career in the Major League Baseball. Um, Just anything that's maybe helped you along the way that somebody wouldn't know. Well, I remember, gosh, it probably – my first year at Pee Wee, um, Bill Adecki came up to me. He was our he he played at Clarkson, played played for a long time. He was our coach. Um, he uh, he got on me one day because that's the first year you can hit. He got on me one day about not finishing a play, and uh, I remember it was like it just never occurred to me. I just you know never finishing a hit and going into the corner. And when that kind of clicked for me. It was like not only did my hockey game kind of explode from that point forward, I really started to hit a stride. Um, but uh, that kind of concept, taking it through life, taking it through even into baseball that next season and and everything about going all the way through. I mean, going into the corner and finish that hit right after the puck leaves and, and, and finishing that play was, was, you know, something real small. But in terms of going forward in baseball, in terms of going forward, uh, you know, at the plate or on the mound and going that extra step, um, I guess it was, it was kind of an analogy. And Bill's like a second dad to me, and he didn't say it that nicely either. <laughs> but, uh, but it struck a nerve, and I, I, I loved it. And, uh, yeah. That's always that. fantastic. It's just one little thing that can turn your life that's around. That's right. Yeah, it's crazy. All in details, right? Uh, well, I have to ask then, as someone that's played both sports at a, at a pretty high level, what's tougher Catching a line driver, a comebacker at the mound, or blocking a slap shot? <laughs> well, I got a broken toe from a few, uh, and it fused. It's, my wife doesn't like looking at it from blocking a few slap shots. <laughs> um, that kind of stuck with me. If I give up a comebacker, though, that means I'm not doing my job, and the other guy at the plate's doing his. And That's a little frightening. I haven't caught too many of those. Luckily, you don't catch it with your teeth. It hits another body <laughs> part. So, uh Probably catching a catching a comebacker is a little tougher. I mean, yeah. you can you can get in front of that puck. It's just, you know, having it's gonna the hurt. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna hurt exactly. It's gonna hurt. Uh, getting getting in, getting out of the way of a uh, comebacker is probably tougher. Yeah, both intimidating in different yes. ways. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, All right, exactly. Matt. You know, you've been a pleasure to talk to. Before we let you go, I know you and your wife um, had a really awesome initiative that you did in Uganda. Tell us about that before we let you go. Yeah. Well. Uh, we started an organization called Kingdom Home last year, and um, basically what we have is a uh, we, we just got back from Uganda. It's a children's home that's uh, rescued girls from the sex trade. So we have 36 girls in there. They've all from ages 8 to 14, and they've all been rescued from different tragedies of the sex trade in Uganda. So now we've brought them in. They have a home. They have uh, food. They have a bed. They're clothed, and they're learning an education, and um, well, they're getting an education, and uh you know, we're going to teach them vocational training and, and pay for university down the road. And uh, this is kind of the start of our organization is this first home. So uh, um, our website is kingdomhome.org. And uh, we are just really excited for what's to come from it and uh, just excited to see how it's going to grow. Well, you played hockey at a pretty high level. Sounds like you could have went pretty far in hockey. <laughs> you play Major League Baseball, but this initiative sounds like it might be the most important thing that you got going on. So uh, good luck with that. Thank you for chatting with us. And when Seattle finally starts playing, we might have to have you on as a correspondent yes. here and there just oh, yeah. to kind of break it down for us. That'd be fun. I'd be all in on that. <laughs> We're going to hold you to that now. Now you've made a promise. But uh, <laughs> thank you for this. We appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on.